Oh my God. What? 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 What, man? <laughs> Hi, cousin Shannon. Hi, Jamel. Oh, well, see, I can't see that. That's 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 on yours. All right, cool. You ready? Ready. Let's, Let's do it. Welcome to the No Love Podcast, where we decrease tomorrow's divorce rate today by teaching singles and couples alike how to experience love on purpose and not by chance. I am your host, Edward L. Fairley, accompanied by my wonderful, lovely co-host, Michelle Larkin. Michelle, say hi to the people. Hey, y'all. We out. We in. We doing this thing. <laughs> true, true. All right, so you know how we do it. Um, the beginning of the show, what you got going on? What's new? What's old? What's happening? What do people need to be prepared for to join, link up, register for? What's going on? I'm preparing to do uh, Queen's Moves on December 7th. Um, if you are in transition, you have some big decision you're trying to make. If you are trying to navigate a, a place where there's a blockage in your, your life um, in the way that you think, then this works out for you. I am um, probably this is about my second year. Um, doing this and had some great and amazing um, testimonies from it. So I put out last week or the week and the week before, right after the show, I put out the registration link on my Facebook page, but that's what's cool right now. That's what I'm working on. I'm working on um, preparing to have the best content for people trying to make it through a transition, um, which I'm just sharing my testimony and it's, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be fun gonna have a good time and you're gonna make a change <laughs> that's what i'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> i love it yes most certainly um so that's that's great so where do they go to register and get ready if you want to register and sign up um it's going to be saturday december 7th from 10 a.m to 12 noon you can register at queensmoves.net so www.queens with an s moves with an s dot net and all the information is there. Some testimonials are there. Um, you can find more information and links to other things out there. But yeah, that's where you can register. I'm so excited. I'm excited because I just know it's going to be a blessed time. And I have never done this where somebody hasn't left with a wow, an exhale, a yes, I can. And I'm just excited. I hope y'all join. Anybody, everybody, tell a friend, join. Queen's Moves, Saturday, December 7th. I love, it. I love it. Um, as far as no love is concerned, I know there's a, a update that's supposed to be being done by the end of the week for the no love app on the Android version. Um, the feedback that I'm getting from you all, just at random people that I have no idea are listening. Um, I really appreciate y'all stopping by, talking to me, telling me that you're listening and following and that you're enjoying the content. Speaking of that, I want y'all to look at this. For those who can see, look at this. Because you are- uh, <laughs> Is that because everybody's talking about- You all, no, no. <laughs> nope, let me clarify this. Let me, let me clarify this. And I think this is gonna be one of several. This was purchased for me. <laughs> I didn't buy this. I didn't buy this. Apparently, he was people really out have sir, a sir, problem. Sir. Tupperware, with me sir. and my Chinese uh, cup. Now cups, plural. One day I'm going to bring the cups stack so y'all can see I have so many of them. But I'm not going to do this every day. But as I get these, because clearly someone literally pulled me to the side and said, did you get a cup yet? Um, and he literally said, well, I need to find the logo because when I get you one, I want to have your logo on it and everything. Aww. You all really feel some type of way about me having my cup. Um, so this lovely <laughs> Yeti um, was purchased by Miss Tila J. Um, Thank you, Tila J. Thank you. <laughs> Tila, Tila bought me this. Uh, so this is this is one I'm I'm going to let me first let me first of all say this. I am going to be on the show with my Chinese cup. Uh, <laughs> some days I'm gonna switch up. But I, y'all are not going to change my setup just because y'all feel some type of way or feel sorry for me, like I cannot get a cup. But I, I really do. I, I did this purposefully. 
uh, to to show that um, you all are funny for one. Uh, to, to feel the need. That means to they're paying this, attention, sir. This, they're paying this attention. Yeti. They care. No, they, Thank like, you. I'm, I'm telling you, you, you don't see their faces. They look like they feel sorry for me. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> it's hilarious, but now? I really, really appreciate it because I, I only have to do two refills of the Yeti. Uh, this is a 36 ounce one. Um, I typically, with my little Chinese cups, I have to do three refills to get my minimal of 72 ounces. So, Tila, I appreciate you. I had another guy named Cleveland. He's talking about getting me a cup. You all are just funny, and people always uh, commenting about the whole cup situation. So, I wanted to go ahead and get that out of the way. Look, I do have a different cup that doesn't look like the many cups that are the same cup uh, that I that I typically drink from the Chinese cup. Um, thank you so much again, Tila J. Uh, as far as um, no love, honestly, I have a a meeting with some church. Um, Did you just I think say some they're church? trying to. Uh, just yeah, some church. How about a I don't know. Yeah, it was a ran. It was randomly shared with me, and I'm going to be meeting up with them about a, a meetup with with the church. So until I get the name, it is some church um, <laughs> that 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 um, they want me to bring and kind of describe the mm -hmm. whole simulator, the board game, because they have been using it um, and they thought it would be a great fit. So that's another conversation and actually something that's going to be forcing me to make sure I get a manufacturer for the actual um, simulation slash game board setup. You can get the and, app on I and iTunes. That, you can play. No, it's not there yet. Not there uh, yet. On um, Google Play. Said, <laughs> she said, "No problem. I appreciate you." Um, um, she's talking about buying me the cup. I appreciate you, love. Um, what else? Oh, so yeah, the iOS not yet ready uh, for you to partake in. Uh, it's coming. I have no control over that. I wish I did. Otherwise, it would have already been done. The Android version is definitely available for free for those who would like to utilize it on Android. Um, you if can, you are where watching, can you download it from? You can download the the, the simulator. The, the from Google, the Google, Google Play. Play. Yeah, yeah, the Google Play Store. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm noticing that too. Uh, even though it's not showing that I'm getting views, I literally had some guy say, "I'm anticipating this stuff. I don't understand how you don't have." many many more viewers and then they actually typed in you need to go to a certain place to subscribe so that you can get more viewers or downloads something of that nature i didn't get to read it it was literally before this show because I, I was finalizing adding the other one from last week so i just i appreciate the love i appreciate the energy that you all give me i appreciate the push that you all gave me to get through last week because i was struggling i do struggle from migraines and when they hit uh they hit but I'm the type of person that oftentimes I think like, you know, there's been shows where there was electronic issues, technology issues. And my personal belief is if I fold to a migraine, the enemy is going to use that as a reason to not get me to share information with you all in the future. So that one didn't work. Um, <laughs> and, and I, <laughs> So, so I'm going to keep on moving when I can as uh, God allows me to be healthy and provide you all with the content, content that you all have been asking for and uh, apparently enjoying. So uh, please continue to share or start sharing. If, it's, if you're enjoying it, share it with someone else. They may very well benefit from it. And if you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe so that you know the weekly updates. If you are on any type of podcast platform, please click the subscribe button because weekly we are updating new shows. So you'll get the update as they arrive. Today's show topic is hashtag nine. <laughs> she shakes her head no. Why are you shaking your head no? I'm not shaking your head no. I'm just waiting to see how you're going to unpack this one because you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just waiting. So Today's show is hashtag nine. Uh, for those who are new to the no love culture, hashtag nine is something that we use in our culture to represent truth. The number nine is the number of truth, which is why 
I came up with the whole hashtag nine concept because um, you cannot escape the truth. No matter what you do, you can hide from it, not look at it. Um, but the truth is the truth. And um, as far as the number nine is concerned, if you multiply the number nine by any number, the sum total of its um, balance in its simplest form, if you add up the, the total balance and bring it down to a simplest form, it will always be nine. I always usually give an example of nine times 11 gives you 99. 99 is nine plus nine will give you 18. One plus eight will give you nine. Um, nine times three, 27, seven plus two will give you nine. Like you can do that with any number, multiply by any number, feel free to do it if you want to test it. And the sum total will be at its simplest form will always come to nine, which means you can't escape nine, which is why number nine is the number of truth. And today's show is going to be an uncomfortable show. <laughs> so let me go ahead and put the disclaimer out there. Um, it, it is going to be an uncomfortable show, show, but it's something that has really been bothering me because I keep hearing it is because people go to their default setting and and um this is going to kind of rob you of what makes you feel so special uh so to speak <laughs> so uh so when i say hashtag nine i'm really talking about the truth about genders <laughs> uh male and female yeah they're definitely uh all right let's let's start this way let's do it this way if you were a a homeless person uh, and you lacked the ability to eat, you were hungry and, um, and you haven't eaten in a while yet. You saw many people going past you with big bags of KFC, Chick-fil-A, Popeye's has been popular lately. You see a whole bunch of people walking past you with big bags of food or you happen to be in a shopping center in hopes to get food and you haven't had much success in getting necessary money or food to get um, to, to feed your hunger. Uh, those people that you walk, watch walking past you, you might uh, kind of feel envious of them or feel like they have more than you or, or you wish you were them, so to speak, or you wish you had the means to at least experience the things that they have. And on the flip side of that, if you go into a buffet and you're, you're eating or you've already eaten and you're about to leave the buffet and you see a guy or a woman walk past with a stacked plate high going to his or her table, you wouldn't feel envious of them, nor would you feel some type of way when you, when you pass them. And, um, and the reason for that is because you could either go back and get some more or you're already satisfied, which is why you were leaving in the first place. And I use those two analogies for a reason because oftentimes um, – as male and females, we, or men and women, some people feel some type of way about the word female. That's a whole other conversation. Um, <laughs> but uh, men and women, it, if, if you're looking at someone feeling that they don't have, or you don't have something that they have, you might feel like you need them, or you might feel envious of them, or you might do whatever it takes to get what it is that they have, i.e., you all see yourself in order to be in that relationship. When in actuality, we are born as individuals with the buffet. We have the capacity to have absolutely everything in the abilities of every other male or female. Uh, the only thing that we cannot do, which is what makes us go together, is create. <laughs> um, so the woman's body was created in a manner whereby she can receive um, so that we can uh, both be fruitful, so to speak, and multiply. The man is provided with the necessary tools and sperm in order to, uh, to attack the egg that the woman holds in order for it to uh, create. But outside of those two things, you two have the capacity to do 
what both of you all um, can do. And this is the kind of stuff that we're going to unpack today because this right here, and the reason why I call it hashtag nine is because we're going to have to debunk the, the, the false truths that we've been taught about this, which are actually preventing us from being able to um, see how similar we are, um, actually be able to help one, uh, one another. Matter of fact, the interesting thing about it is um, we were created to be helpmates. You can't help your mate if you can't do what it is that I need you to help me with. Uh, any parent, if you have the little, the young, young child with you trying to hand you tools or do whatever it is that you're asking them to, or that they're, they're acting like they're helping you do, like from a cooking standpoint or whatever, they're really not helping you. They're really in the way. They're sometimes annoying and, and, and a nuisance. Uh, for lack of a better term, and but you play the role or what have you, but they're not helping. You're not a helpmate if you can't do what it is that I'm trying to do. Um, now, you can contribute in different ways, but still we would be meeting the same goal. But for the most part, if you can't do what it is that I'm doing, you're not helping me at all. Um, you're, you're either going to be enabling me or you're going to be an in, uh, uh, an actual hindrance. And I see your mind going a thousand miles a minute, Michelle. So I want to hear what you're thinking before we dive into what hashtag. I, I just was, I was waiting to see what the, the framework of the conversation was going to be. And I think what I'm hearing you say is that it's really about our emotional capacity um, and uh, personalities and just um, that, that the women, the men are from women and Venus, are Mar men are from Mars and women are from Venus type scenario that, that it should be not so stringently separated. I think that's what I'm hearing you say. I mean, technically, it can be uh, put in that way. Uh, we're just individuals, and whether yeah, you're like that, that we have the capacity to relate to one another without gender restrictions. Meaning, like only oh. men have a role and women have a role, and they're restricted oh. to only relating on that level. Is that what? Oh we're yes. Talking about? Oh yes. And yeah. Oh yeah. That's exactly what we're talking about. Um. And um. And what I challenge, because I know there's gonna be people that are watching. Because again, this is a difficult conversation I had because a lot of people's identity is based off of this. Uh, well, a good example, you hear, uh, I hear this quite often. Well, either from the, the, the male or from the, the woman, um, them saying, well, I can't teach, I can't teach my son how to be a man or a man saying, well, uh, she can't teach a, a woman can't teach a man how to be a man. Okay. I challenge any man. And then I'm going to do this in reverse after I'm done. I challenge any man to tell me or the listeners how to be a man. I'll wait. I'll look for comments. I'll, I, I, will, I will chime in and I'll respond. And, no. if someone, and if someone takes the time to actually break it down and teach, my follow-up question or challenge is going to be, now point to one thing in that thing that either a woman doesn't want or a woman can't do. And and I will I will I will bow down to what it is that you're saying. And we've already discussed the differences between the uh the, the male and female. But as individuals, our capacity to do anything are are identical, are identical. Um we might not do it as as good as someone else, but the ability to do it periodly, I mean at period. I don't know where I said period. Uh, period uh, is uh, they're they're equal. They're the equivalent. Um, I've had women or um, men say something. Well, well, you know, women are are their nurturers. <laughs> okay, so please take the the definition of a nurturer uh, or nurture or what have you, and that's to pretty much to educate, build, and motivate and provide for a person. Okay, now what man can't do that? And if you are a man that can't do that, you just have work you need to be working on. And I can guarantee you, you're going to have struggles in different parts or compartments of your life, whether it be through your interactions or whatever, or you're, you're not being really good for your, uh, for your children or whatever, or whatever. But at the same token, you, you have coaches, you have mentors that do all of the things that I just defined from a nurture 
standpoint. Yeah, uh, um, I've heard uh, men say, well, when, women, they want security, or a woman say people that want, um, women want security. Uh, what do you think a man is going to, job, uh, to a job for? He's going for to not be secure? Like the whole point of the person going to work is to feel secure in, in how they live and whatever. That's security. Say women are not, uh, they're emotional beings. What do you call a man getting mad? <laughs> or <laughs> the fact that you're getting married, is that not an emotional uh, uh, thought process or, or feeling whatever typically when you first start off? It's, it's emotional. Anger, love, whatever, that's all emotion. Um, go ahead, Michelle, because I see you like you're just switching, you're swiveling, everything. Go ahead, share your thoughts. I, I think talk. because I'm trying, I, because it's such a broad topic and there's so mm -hmm. much worked up in there that it's very easy to get lost in the intro and not really realize how you're going to systematically kind of approach it. So what I'm trying to hear from you is if we're talking about emotional representation or how you show up emotionally right so that's one aspect which is are you going to be a nurturer are you going to be a provider are you going to be you know are you going to be um a tr teacher are you uh emotionally in in intelligent emotionally connected and emotionally able to respect uh, expect express yourself well those those are emotional expressions that i think what i'm hearing you say is we're human and humans have the capacity to express all of those emotions, whether they're male or female. I can be emotional. I can be nurturing. I can be a provider. I can be um, the the which call this the st stable person. I can be stable, and I think it, if I'm hearing you correctly, that's what we're talking about at this particular part. Is that I have as a human, so I shouldn't expect my me to as a woman to be purely emotional and then the gentleman to be purely stable and they're mutually exclusive and i should only ex expect stability from him and he should expect me to be nurturing and do that which is different from roles roles that can be negotiated in, in the relationship based on whatever works for the two of you don't have to be restricted by emotion or or how you're your gender. You you can negotiate a relationship where the man stays home and takes care of the kids. That doesn't make him any less a man. I think that's what we're talking about. Doesn't make him less of a man because the way that the relationship worked out, her job may be more, you know, stay able to support the home and she may be willing to be able to go out and he may be willing to take care of the kids during this during for a season. That doesn't make them non not the gender that's what we're saying right we're saying all of that i mean this it's not we're not it's not this is to make it clear that we're all individuals to get caught up in the role of a male or female is to one prevent yourself it's from being able to it's restrictive it doesn't allow the person to fully be expressed developed like no, no to, to to be a full person actually um so so ultimately it, it prevents the 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 people from effectively communicating because there's a lot of assumptions that are being had when you assume that because they are a male or female uh, that they're going to act a certain way respond a certain way or they are a certain way because of their particular gender uh it also uh prevents certain people from being able to evolve into their full potential because they allow for culture or society to define them as a certain uh, thing. But to be perfectly honest with you, this is where all of this came from. It literally came from uh, cultural teachings and the way that life was at a specific time and evolved to where it is today. And we just did not let go. We got institutionalized to the culture that, uh, that we were handed or shared um, and, and to where we assume that the, this is the way that it is when in actuality we've been liberated from that, but we just don't realize and we're still walking around with the same mindset, which is why I chose the word institutionalized because though you have been liberated from that thought process, you still have the mentality uh, that is keeping you restricted from actually being or even becoming or evolving into your full potential. Um, ultimately, um, if you were also to provide me with how a man is or how a woman was, um, or supposed to be, I would also challenge you to, to question uh, the thought process of, okay, so say that 
we go with the whole the male is the provider. What is what is a person that is single that never joins with another male supposed to do in their in their life? Um, remember, no love is the, the for yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Like, well, how, do, have how, how, how do I eat? <laughs> exactly. How, how, how do I eat? Well, okay. So, but then that means that we're really talking about come to a, any relationship as a whole fully developed person because what that, that's the basic core premise is you are, you can be what you are to yourself, to your mate, but that means you should try to be fully whatever you are. Right. So that I can provide for myself. I can nurture myself. I can sustain myself. I can make friends and Let's, connect. And I, be I need us to developed. shift from can to you should. <laughs> and again, and if we're coming together as wholes, I mean, and this is where the other person is, to be the source this of your is joy. Why, this is what I started. This is why I started with the buffet analogy. Because well, you should we didn't, already. We didn't start with the. Uh, a clarity of what what aspects you were talking about so that's why i was like you're starting at a buffet because there is no sure, aspect but. there's no aspect there's no aspect to individuality there's none at this whole premise the premise of this show is to, to debunk whatever thing that has you holding on to well this is what women do this is how women are this is what men do and this is how men are so i don't care what you throw on the table i can assure you that I can challenge it, I can debunk whatever the thought process is it, uh, whatever the pro thought process is, it, is out of it, outside of the male is the one that's going to provide the seed for the egg in order for it to produce an actual um, baby. And the woman is going to carry the, uh, that seed and, until, it's, uh, it, and until it reaches its full. So what's the benefit of, the of embracing this philosophy? So like, and I, I'm not just, what, what, how would, or how should or how can a life be changed if they release this the restrictions of of stereotypes basically what we're talking about uh, what what's the poss what's the potential there the potential is infinite um for one you have now relieved yourself of uh the one the field to need someone and that's that's where i first started with with the whole um homeless person like you're thinking about man i wish i had what they had, which in turn could actually put you in a predicament where you're doing things that are not things that you would want to do to get what it is that you feel that you need, uh, which is why a lot of people do end up in relationships that they don't want to be in because they feel that they need to have a man or they feel that they need to have a woman or they feel that they need to have a woman because, uh, because men don't cook. They feel like they need to have a man because uh, I need someone to take care of me. A man is a provider. You laugh at this, but there's literally people who have this as a philosophy. No, no, no. I'm saying uh, they have it as a as their philosophy. So once you're liberated from the thought process of you not being um, whole enough to be able to take care of all of that stuff yourself, which you should be able to do, then you you're for one you're you start to choose what's best for you <laughs> as opposed to accepting what you feel you, you um, accepting anything to, to get what you feel you need. Um, and you also get into a place where you finally have a relationship whereby you know you're wanted um, as opposed to know that you're needed. Um, I think that just means that you, if you can get to a place of being whole, you can know what you're looking for in a complement to that wholeness. And that those, e those evaluating factors become different than if I just feel like I need the characteristic of a male. Like, or I, like, um, like you're saying, I need somebody to take care of me, say, for example, or... Uh, and, you know, but that also goes back to the stereotype. And I'm, okay, this is from a divorced person, but there's this, uh, when I was younger, it was very much, I'm not, my identity is wrapped up in whether or not I have a partner. Um, I'm, am I good enough? And so that, but that comes from not being whole or coming into that situation whole. Uh, and then expecting because of stereotype, typical kind of expectations, right? That I'm supposed to cook or, and clean and take care of the kids because those are the check boxes that I had in my head from, from growing up. Um, as a role uh, identities 
and then realizing that it's really about what can we do together and where, who has what strengths and how can we build a unit that allows us to be our fullest self. Like that's a different approach to that connection and relationship than I'm half of a person and I need the other half, whatever that half looks like. That, that's, that's a very different paradigm. And I think there's a, I think I would say there's a, a trend right now to find yourself, right? Or, or to just be complete and work through whatever it is. But then if we're not careful, you kind of come in, I don't need you. Well, which is a, the, the other pendulum swing, right? It's too far, like, I don't really need you. Uh, and so do whatever you want to do. It's a work has long for long, it's going to work, and then you can move on, which is not necessarily, you know, real commitment either. So, Well, I mean, it, it depends on where it's coming from, because I'm going to tell you right now, my thought process and philosophy is I don't need my wife. It, that's just the we reality. always love this conversation. You better go. <laughs> go ahead. Like, go ahead. Just, go ahead. This is the reality because of what it is. Really, what is illustrating your point? Yeah, this conversation you're about to have is really where the illustration of your point is. I, I I don't need my wife, and um, and to be perfectly honest with you, I work hard to get her to a place where she does not need me. I hope she's already there. Um, but at the same token, uh, once I get her to that place, and I know she doesn't need me, then I know I'm wanted not needed. Some people are in a relationship, like, like they say, uh, you'd be like, well, why you, you're going through all of that? Well, why won't you leave them? Well, it's because I don't want to be alone. That is indirectly saying I need him in order for me to have happiness or to have uh, peace or to have whatever it is that they're sticking around for crap um, just so that they can feel like they have someone. So when you feel like you need someone, that is a very desperate place to be in, which in turn causes you to compromise yourself in even your ways of life in, i.e. Your, your standards, your principles, your morals, and your values, just to, to appease that person so that they can stay. That is not a good place to be. And once we get to a place where we know that we have the capacity to be everything that we need to be in order to sustain ourselves, enjoy ourselves, while being able to have community and friends, not saying that we don't need uh, to have community, communication or whatever, but we don't need an actual uh, partner in the sense of relationship, marriage, or what have you. And when you get to that place where you're fine by yourself, you have amazing relationships with someone else. Um, well, that's where, but, that's where the, the roles become less restrictive because if I'm, I can now come into the relationship with we're both, you know, whole people. We both can sustain ourselves and do all the things that it would take to sustain ourselves. If, if we choose to cohabitate or if we choose to um, have to depend on each other for something, then let's have a division of labor, so to speak, or a division of responsibility that makes the most sense to efficiently run the house. Yes, that sounds straight business, but it really is. That's what it is. It becomes what's comfortable for you to do. Like if I, I don't like to clean and you like to clean. It doesn't mean I can't. Exactly. It means that we're no, I, I, having a conversation I, about you want to do that. That's cool. We'll make that work. By no means am I um, even, I don't even, I, I hope it didn't. I don't understand how it could have been taken that way. If your dynamics in your household um, are traditional, so to speak, there's nothing wrong with that. That is just y'all set up. And if that works for y'all, that's perfect. That's wonderful. Um, but, um, I would not necessarily teach that that's the way it's supposed to be to your children or anyone else. That just happens to work for you two. Um, now, oftentimes, because your children are seeing this, which this, all of this is the product of what people have been seeing for, for hundreds of years, um, this, which is why it's a part of the people's psyche now that a woman is this way or a man is that way, uh, which the, I'll get into that in a minute. Um, but, um, I would definitely make sure it's understood and, and taught that you should be, for one, well-versed in every aspect of what's going on in this household. And you should be raising your children as such um, so that they can take care of themselves um, by themselves. Because no matter how you slice it, there is a before you're married <laughs> uh, time span. Uh, and hopefully there is a, a time span where they are on their own so that they can find themselves, so to speak, so that they really know who they are 
in, in their abilities and their capacities as well. But people should be well-versed in nurturing. People should be well-versed in providing. People should be well-versed in um, uh, teaching, um, being emotionally involved and being able to uh, communicate their thoughts and feelings. Every Male or female, you should have all of these things. You should be and a good citizen, you but you can't be a good oh. citizen, a good, well-rounded citizen if you're only being raised to fulfill the princess fantasy or the prince fantasy. Like you're not you're, gonna be an effective citizen at all. You right, but you're if you're if you're you're driving toward a particular identity, you're leaving out all the possibilities related to being a full person. If I'm trying to live the princess life and I want to be the princess and queen and sit on the throne, then I'm re- I'm missing the fact that, you know, if, especially if I grew up watching Disney, right? But um, if you grew up watching Disney, you know, none of those ladies had a job. None, none of them princesses really had a job. <laughs> they were just waiting for Prince Charming to save them so they could sit in the the, um, the the throne. That's not real. But if you and I just say that to say like if you are if you are limiting what you are seeing um, as roles and based on gender, then you're missing the possibility of how you can be a whole person and fill out all the roles in in, in life that takes us to sustain, sustain yourself. Because again. Like you said earlier, and I agree with you 100%, um, partnership isn't the epitome of existence. Because it's partnership not. expresses itself in so many ways. There are friendships, there are communities, there are ways to give back and serve and connect and love and be loved that are outside of the romantic relationship. But having all of those opportunities can make you the best possible person when you do get in a romantic relationship, especially if you go back into it without, I don't need you. I'm not going to, if I don't have you, I can't breathe. It's not the, the way to get in. It's more like, you know, I'm good. You're good. I like you. You like me. Let's have a conversation. I'm not going to send my representative to this meeting. I'm going to come myself. Oh, I got a, a nice little comment. Let me read this here. Um, says, uh, that's oh, why it is important. All right, uh, it says that's why it is important that while single and individual is single, that individual should become a well-rounded whole person, so that when God join you to uh, you together as one, both will uh, complete each other. Uh, I was with you till you say complete, uh, um, but I, I love what you're saying. And, and and if you're already complete, it doesn't take for another person to make you two complete. You are two complete people bringing a complete vision together. But I love what you're saying, Mr. Bishop, and I agree with you um, most certainly. Um, and, and this is unfortunately, this has been taught. But let's let's talk about where that came from, which is another reason why it's 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 funny. Oh, uh, compliment. That's what I'm talking about. See, and that's the word I'm looking for. Compliment. Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Bishop. Thank you, sir. Um, so so yes, compliment each other, not uh, not complete each other. I agree with you 100. percent and um, we have to be mindful with this mindset about how men are and how women are from a standpoint of living in our livelihoods and everything came from. And um, that, is, that is literally from a time span where women's rights were probably a little under slavery, <laughs> just a little under slavery. And, and, that's, that's, and, that's if you're, and that's if you're a Caucasian woman. Um, so you just, go ahead, go ahead. You have a comment? Uh, I'd like to shout out Miss Essence Pina. Hey girl. She said, okay. what about go the ahead. idea that a lot of men seem to be intimidated by women that hold their own? This is about probably following up on the compliment comp situation. Um, how can- no, that's fine. That's, 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 that's actually easy. Um, don't deal with them. <laughs> like, that's honestly like why why would you deal with so like that all right so this is this is the blessing about being yourself it, I'm it not about literally this is me it I literally repels <laughs> it literally repels the people that are not for you but what, what happens is we act a certain way and we start attracting people that we don't want when if we were being ourselves it immediately repels the people that are not for you and it attracts the people that are for you. So now, you know, you're choosing people that literally align with who it is that you need. So if you're a boss, why would you submit yourself 
and try to make yourself be all dainty or whatever you so that you can try to get a man as opposed to maintaining yourself being the okay. boss and then a boss finds you and says i like that and y'all two become bosses together and build a whole freaking empire i mean i mean so possible <laughs> and Bishop, yes, Bishop Micah said and i hope i'm saying your name correctly if, i don't know if it's micah or mika depending on where uh from a language standpoint, it, it derived from, but um, he, he said they are not a whole man. That's exactly right. If you are intimidated, let me see. All right, so y'all about to get me rowdy. Let me sip my Yeti, uh, my Yeti water. All right, so this is actually, this kind of like goes with what it is that I'm talking about here. Because if you feel that you are not enough, you need to get enough so that you don't have to feel intimidated by someone who has more than what you have. So if you are that man that has a problem with the woman out there being a boss and doing her thing, or she makes more than you or what have you, go and step your game up and make more money or, or change your career, do whatever, or actually just be proud of her and know that you two collectively can build something from her from her gifts together collectively. Y'all are supposed to be one. So just like she would say, your income is your income, her income is y'all's income. So like, I don't understand. I really don't understand that. I, I can give I, you a little wife, bit of insight on that. Ahead. If you are a boss or you have a strong personality and you tend to intimidate other people, what you're, when you are, uh, when that bothers you, it's usually oh because you yeah. feel like the, all of the, you're repelling everyone and you haven't been around those that will attract you. And so that's part of that is letting go of the fear that there's not a circle in which the boss men show up and they're like, yeah, I want a boss woman too. Like they're, they're out there. <laughs> they're out there. You don't have to be afraid. Just be yourself. Yeah. It don't fit. The shoe don't fit. Move on. Like my, Exactly. I, like that I is like. You. I, 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 maybe I we can be friends, but you're not the one. That's cool. But, but you're not even a if you are walking as a boss, a queen boss, please sign up for Queen's Move so you can see how to be a boss. Um, <laughs> if you're moving as a boss, a peasant is not going to uh, try to approach you in the first place. It's just not going to happen. And you're not even going to be in the same move. You're not going to be in the same vicinity of that I person. Say, this if is a Queen's really Move moment right here. This is a Queen's Move <laughs> Go moment. Ahead. When you, as a queen, approach somebody who's not at your level because you have some insecurity that you haven't worked out that's not their fault so it's they, definitely if your they, fault if they, it's if they if they reject you then then that's not their fault because they were who they were before you came up to them so but if, if, if you, you, you should if be you attracting are, on your level yeah but if you're demoting yourself or devaluing yourself yes, just that's you insecurity value, to demote yourself. that's a yeah that's a self-esteem insecurity issue that you have and that's your fault too. So own it. Um, like if you're if you are a boss, continue to be a boss that's and you will attract boss like people. But if you are trying to adjust yourself to accommodate other people, you're gonna get you're lowering your standards and that's what you're gonna get, uh, that's what you're gonna pick from. Um he said uh that's called being un unequally yoked. That's actually technically based off of religious uh religious standpoint, being une uh, unequally yoked. That's just uneven. From a yoke standpoint, if we're talking about capacity, uh, that's just someone that is ha uh, has the same type of bottle. All right, so two Yetis, two thirty twos, <laughs> two uh, two thirty six ounce Yetis, and they just have a half of the actual capacity of the Yeti. That they're not there yet. You're full, and now you can help someone get there, but you should not be going into a relationship to do community service. Sorry, that's just a reality. Of what it is. You should already be there with where they where you would want them to be, and then you two can grow together. But you should not be there. Go ahead. I got some. All right. It's, got it's the peasant. Oh, if the peasant, Mr. Stephen Bell, pay you. If the peasant is a player, he will most definitely approach. <laughs> now okay. I don't know All if right. he's a player, player, or if he's a player. Like I don't. Yeah, so well, well, the, the question that I would have for this, all right, so if the peasant is a player, um, one, how did they so get... He's playing. He don't you? care whether he gets you or doesn't get you. He's just trying. He must be. Yeah, I mean, well, they, yeah, well, I mean, it's a numbers game. But 
You should, if you are a boss, now, let me, I got to call this. If you're a boss, you should be able to discern foolishness. I'm going to start with that. And, and, they, and, and, and if they are able to creep in uh, <laughs> to, to, to get you with the disguise, which is why I think intellect is so sexy to me because it cannot be, you can't, you can't disguise it. I that is, that's what's sexy to me. That is, that is so sexy to me. Like, that's why my Angela and my wife be like, I don't want to hear about my Angela. She knows I love my Angela. I like, I like mental because you cannot, you can't put makeup on that. You can't disguise that. You can't hide that. I'm going to be in this conversation. You can't put makeup on that. Talking. Hashtag nine. If, 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 if you cannot, if you can't live up to that, all your sex is gone. I was attracted to you at first glance, but once we started talking, you immediately got ugly and I'm dis I'm not interested anymore. So like, Sound like a boss. But <laughs> why yeah, why why is it that they got that far to where they could play you? I'm not saying that you can't be played, but if you are dating and you have what we call the non-negotiable list if you're new, uh, or the grocery list if you're new, depending on if you read my book versus been on this platform, uh, then you should be checking off things that um that are not easy for someone to actually swindle you on uh, on choosing them to where you you don't get to a place where you can be played so to speak so that's a, a again it, when you get to that place um that that is their that's their problem not yours but at the same token if it's bothering you is your problem because you are now settling because you want to have someone in your life that's a whole nother show it's one of our self-esteem shows and you can feel free to go and look through the archives <laughs> on whatever platform that you uh, that you're watching or listening on. Um, but yeah, this is about getting to a place where you understand that you are enough, and you have the capacity to do that, everything that you. The truth. Can we get to the point where we, I, are you are enough? Period. I'm when enough. You, when you know that you are enough. And you have the capacity to do every single thing that you are holding out for this man to come and provide you or this woman to come and give you. You learn how to cook. You learn how to have your white clothes look like white clothes. Why are you walking around with pink underclothes? Because you put the colors with the whites. Like you need to know how to separate clothes, wash clothes, get your lawn and stuff manicured. These are things that everyone in the household should know how to do on their own, whether you are male or female or uh, a man or a woman, you should know how to do this stuff and not be waiting for someone to, to allow for you to be able to have the privilege of having these things. You said there's a comment, go ahead. Yes, there's a comment. Uh, what's the name of your book, sir? Since you threw it out there, you need to go ahead. Oh, the handbook the for increasing your relationship IQ. Um, if you inbox Michelle that you are interested your email address, I will email it to you for free. You don't even have to pay for it. I don't want anyone to have any excuses for not experiencing real love on this earth. That's the whole reason why all of this, this entire platform is free. Now, for those who just want things your way, like Burger King, and you will prefer the tangible experience, like the board game, which we're working on, you're going to have to pay for it. Otherwise, you still can have the same experience for free on the simulator, which is the Android version of that. So there's no excuses. Love can definitely be experienced. And this is what our mission is. And this is what my mission is going to be until I die. And I am intentional about being a contributor to the future divorce rate, because these things are what's preventing people from getting to where they need to go. Uh, go ahead, Michelle. Uh, I got a couple of people who want the book. So we'll, we'll hook, I will hook oh, them up afterwards. That's cool. That's great. Yeah. So um, just go ahead. But I wanted to, to piggyback off of your statement of, you know, love can be experienced. And this is really what this is all about. And going back to the gender um, neutrality kind of space from a responsibility or role space. It's like learning how to, we talked about it on a previous episode, but it's accepting people for who they are, not because all men are this or all women are that, but having the conversation and being able to have, like, who are you? Like, take away all of that. Who are you? And getting to know that person and accepting that person and then negotiating responsibilities accordingly. That's respect. And that's where the genuineness can come from is that I, I, I accept you for who you are and the strengths that you bring to the table. And if we're going to 
be in a relationship, most likely we complement each other. Where you're strong, I'm weak. Where you're weak, I'm strong. Or where we're both weak, we're willing to collaborate together to figure out how to get to the next level. And that isn't about roles and responsibilities. That's not at its root. It's really about how can I help you be the best person that you can be and how can you help me? And, and like you said earlier, it's about serving, right? So loving is showing up as a servant. Um, and servants don't have gen, isn't, servant isn't a gender specific definition. How can I serve you? Not at all. And, and, and uh, being as though uh, Micah, he, um, he brought up the, the Bible. Let's talk about it. So they, uh, when, when they created, uh, when God created Adam, uh, Adam, uh, he created him in the garden and told him to, to work it. And then he added Eve as his what? It literally says his help mate. So what was she helping him do? The same thing he was already doing? So, so it wasn't, Eve, you go over here and I want women to do this and I want men to do this. It was help him do what I told him to do. It's the same Take thing. Take care of the whole planet. How about that work? Exactly. Like, Take there care is of no, it. You've never seen it broken down that a gender, like, and I hear people and even pastors say, you know, he created man to work. Yeah, and then he created Eve to help him work. It literally says, that's a lot of responsibility. One man could not take care of the entire planet. <laughs> well, he couldn't create. He couldn't create. So he, he, they helped create to help with the work. And everybody that they created, they were supposed to help with the work. Um, and, and historically, uh, if you even look through histor- history, women have done everything, just like men have done everything. From growing things, making things, building things. We, we, we help. We just do. It. We all get together. We do stuff. Whatever is necessary, we get it done. I'll survival. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bishop, uh, Bishop Micah said, how soon is it to have that who are you conversation? Um, he said it, it, it's on the first date for him. I mean, to each his own, but I think a date is a process. And I don't think that it's a, I'm asking you this question conversation. I think it is a, I'm finding out who you are throughout the dating process. And, um, and I might ask indirect conversations to kind of get your mindset on certain things to reveal to me who you are. Um, what I mean by that is um, uh, maybe a question I've, uh, that that might imply that the person is sexist or not sexist, <laughs> whether it be a riddle or something like that, or just to have conversations that like, well, what do you think about that? And see where their thought process, uh, this is the, I mean, this is the topic uh, I'm talking about like, uh, and that's why I oftentimes have people that say uh, like they're engaged, they come to me and, <clears throat> and I'm like, like, it's really premarital counseling is really simple. It's really, really simple. You simply, <laughs> if, if you're about to marry someone, ask them, what do you expect to happen after we get married and shut up? Either shut up and let them write it out. If you two are going to write it out or shut up and listen to what they have to say. And what you're going to find is they're, they're them saying I do to you either was the to affirm that they love who you are or to affirm that they can't wait to change you who they want you to uh, want you to be. And that that my friend <laughs> will give you a a really really Un, a big understanding. So, no, that's question. the question. Like, even when you're dating, are you dating the person or are you dating the potential? Like, are you dating who you think they could be or are you dating well, yeah, who they this actually is why, are right now? This is why observation is probably, it, it's, uh, that's why I meant it's a process. Observation is huge um, because it's got a lot of people that's going to tell you stuff. Um, but, but what they will not, what they can't necessarily lie about is what they, what they expect from you. That's why you ask them, what do you expect to happen? And they're typically going to be talking about what you are going to be doing uh, or what you both are going to be doing, which is going to expose how they really feel about you. And it's a tough conversation to be had. And I had some people that moved forward, even though they took it, because they felt they made the investments. They've done all that. They've already talked about being engaged, and they don't want to be embarrassed. But you re- you rather go into this relationship knowing that this person is wreck your whole life you. than be embarrassed? They mm. don't want At you. 20, they want yes, who you could be or who they w- want you to be. And that's where, that's why so many people go into this relationship. They both say I do, but they both mean something totally different. I wish they had translators when they were at the, when they're at the daggone, um, 
when they're at the uh, the wedding at the altar sharing their I do's, like I wish it would translate to what it actually means. I do want you to start being home on time now. I do want you to have a meal for me. All right, you got a comment? What's going on? Uh, I, we we we've mentioned the representative a couple of times. So I have a question or a statement that the representative comes when um, you're dating, and I'm. I think we should talk about that a little bit because that does go into plays into the gender thing because people show up the way that you they think you want them to show up that's the representative not who they really are and want to be but they bring to the table who they believe you want and are will get them what they their end game is whatever that is um and then of course it's about sustaining it like you can't typically sustain the representative it, that's it, correct so what's the actual fail. question though What's the question? Uh, I guess the question is, when does the representative go away? The, the, uh, there's not a time span to it, but eventually they're going. it's going to happen. Typically, when you transition to a relationship, but you should be able to catch it prior to. Uh, well, uh, he, she, said, she said, no, I wish they came with side effect warning, so, like, pack, like packaging. She wishes oh, that yeah. the uh, representative came with the package sign that said this has come with side effects well this is this is another this is another reason why I, all right so all right let's 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 go ahead and do this really quickly oh. <laughs> so from from the, the standpoint because these are great questions and i appreciate you all really really um wanting to know these uh the answers to these questions um so we're talking about dating so clearly we're, we're talking to people who uh, are are on the market uh, and they're valid questions so what is your grocery list, i.e. your non-negotiable list? And let me show you or kind of define what that would be. Because typically people get, they get got <laughs> because their grocery list or their non-negotiable list is based off of physicality. Which will easily, mm -hmm. whenever you look at things with your eyes, you're easily fooled. Because people are magicians. There's makeup, there's filters, there's all these different things. So they're putting their best foot forward, um, so to speak, and to, unless you actually found someone who loves themselves and is going to bring themselves forward. Now, let's first understand this. <laughs> if you are the person that is presenting yourself as a representative, that means you don't like yourself. <clears throat> so if you are doing this, you don't like you so much so that you need to act like a certain person to win people over to like you who in turn, even if you get them to like you, they don't like you because you've been acting like someone that you're not. So even when you have found love, you still didn't find love because you have someone that does not love you. They love the they fictitious love the person that you created. So now you, put th you went through all of that work to never find love in the first place. So that, let's start with that. Second, as far as the best way I can define what your list of things that you should have in the person or for a person that you're looking for. If the world had people who looked identical, what is it that you will want that person to have that makes them a person that you will want to be with? What characteristics, what standards, what mannerisms, what things? Now, if you can define that, from a standpoint of if all men look the same, if all women look the same, this is what I want my wife or husband to look like. If you can define that with the clear picture, that is your grocery list. That's your non-negotiable list. If the world looked alike and you could define what it is, what that person should have, if that is what your grocery list is, meaning it's nothing that you can define up there that's a physicality, which clearly should be morals, values, uh, uh, principles, things of that nature. If you have that, it's very, very difficult for someone to trick you uh, into uh, to being with them. And, it, and it's only through time, invested time, that you can even find out that they are who you're looking for. So, uh, mm -hmm. so I think that that in itself will actually force them to actually show themselves because that takes time to find out if that person is uh, who who you're looking for. I think it I think it had uh, goes back to also like to your first point which is you don't really like yourself if you're sending the representative um, and if you are constantly getting people who are bringing the representative 
then what what is that saying um and what why is it i think there is something that it is saying when you constantly get a representative and you're finding out you know six months two months three months in that this isn't the person that they said then what are you putting out that they feel like they gotta try to pretend also also what are what are you doing when you find out they're not the one? That's what that's what irks me. No, they're not. We're not doing that. <laughs> we feel like we've invested time. I put in time, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to stay. I'm going to stick this thing I'm gonna, out. Or I'm going to fix she, them. I'm going to fix her. I'm going to turn them into the one I like. I'm going to fix them. This is this is the trick of the enemy line, and also a sign that you have you're you're struggling with your self esteem. And you're just really really trying to get a man or a woman. When you say, well, not everybody's perfect. If you're saying while you're dating someone or you're in a relationship with someone that not everybody's perfect when it's coming to choosing them, and I'm not saying you're married, saying you're choosing, because I agree, no one is perfect. But from a standpoint of you actually choosing who you want to spend the rest of your life with, they should have every single thing from a values uh, standpoint, um, a standard standpoint, uh, morals, um, I said morals, I said values, um, <clears throat> principles, things that you stand on and you believe in, they should, there should not be any kind of wavering in that. They should meet every single checkpoint um, because that is the ingredients to the, the, ma the maintenance of your love and your happiness. So if they lack that, what you are going to be fighting with or about on something that's automatically going to have conflict. So even if you pick the perfect person, you're going to have conflict. So you're starting mm -hmm. something that automatically has conflict with conflict. That's just, that's a given. So why would you start something that's already going to have issues or wilderness or whatever? Because that's what it is necessary in order for you all to really, really become one. Because in order for something to become one, if you twist something together, it's still not one, still separated. You literally have to break all of those things down and blend them all together in order for it to really be one. So it's gonna be a process of literally breaking yourself down, seeing yourself and automatically coming to a place where you two are actually one. And to go through that process, they either are gonna have what it takes to make them worthy of going through that process, or they're not going to have it, which is why people get divorced, because they didn't find someone that was worth even going through the mess that you gotta go through in order for you to really, really get to a place that you two are really, really enjoying yourselves in one and in this blissful place. Uh, I think you have to bring those core principles to the table because everybody comes with their own uh, life experience, right? So everybody comes with some history, some baggage, some experience, but your core principles will allow you to at least meet in the middle and agree on the approach to, to blending um, together. And you... you like you said, you can't put makeup on intelligence. You really can't put makeup on character uh, or um, principles and, and morals. They, they're they there or they're not. Um, and that's part of the, the dating phase is just and being present enough to see it and not get caught up in this, right? Get, look past this for a second. And that takes time. Because that's it. You, we're human. We get enamored by good looks and, and sex appeal and... Uh, you know, chemistry and all that stuff, that, that's real, it's there. And it takes a little bit of time to get past that to the real person. Because at first you can, get, you can get caught up and sustain yourself for quite some time on just chemistry and, and think and mistake that as connection on the principles and morals and the character. Mm -hmm. I, I see uh, Bishop said, that's probably why I'm still single because my grocery list is deep. Okay. Oh, oh but Henry said, Mr. Sneed said, I've always said if you uh, couldn't or wouldn't still be in love with and want to still be with him or her, if they became a uh, quadriplegic uh, the day after you choose them, then you may want to rethink it. Just one example. That's a great example because time itself can really destroy any relationship whose foundation is predicated on physicalities. Um, a car accident couldn't destroy that you hitting the glass scratching your forehead and face all up um if time itself like the things that are sitting up drop down uh like um having a baby like there's so many different things that the physic the physical aspect of that can really really destroy so if there's no depth 
in the foundation of that relationship, meaning, uh, which is why I, I stress the whole, the principles, the morals, the values the, uh, that you have as your, the, the things that cause you to choose a person. Um, because once those physical things go away, you won't have anything to allow for the, the relationship to evolve uh, into. Um, we're about to start having to wrap up. This actually like took a turn into like a dating, uh, a dating um, coaching session. Um, but the, the ultimate goal of this is to really, really help you all understand, like, like, please, like, I, and, I, and I'm still waiting. I still have yet to see, I, I see men watching. I see women watching. I, I, I would love to see either someone tell me um, how a woman teaches a woman, uh, a young lady, how to become a woman. How a man teaches another man how to be a man. I'd be like, uh, like, men are providers. I'm like, well, how you teach your son that? You go to work. He don't see you work. All he sees you do is leave and come back home, which is why they just expect things to be there. So what did you teach him? Unless you were sitting down and, and, and showing him how to work, you haven't taught a man how to be a man. All you did was teach him to leave and come back home, and then the lights are on. They don't know how that transaction took place at all. Unless you're sitting down, breaking down the bills and showing that you're writing out checks or doing the transactions online, you haven't taught them anything. In your mind, you did. You feel like a man and that you're doing all this stuff or a woman. You feel like all I can, I'm, the, I'm the woman I have to do. Like, your husband can do that. I do that. <laughs> There's nothing in this house that goes on that I don't do. I'm definitely the nurturer, definitely the one that's going to make you think, think you out of your, your emotional state. I'm going to empathize with your emotional state, speak to it in a manner that I can break down and give you uh, examples of how much I understand or how I experience stuff to help me or relate. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I, I think that, go, just going back to my own, um, the, the back to my own experience of how sometimes I think when people say teach a man to be a man and a woman to be a woman, it's the technical things. It's not necessarily emotional things. I think that we, we can safely assume that most people can accept that we've evolved to have some emotional kind of neutrality there like like we're saying but like i do think that people think you know teaching a young man how to tie a tie or how to sh do a get shaved and, i didn't say that they couldn't i was just saying typically people categorize it that way like teaching a young lady how to you know take care of herself uh wear the correct undergarments and you're right i'm not saying they don't because clearly i have been a single parent it's not that i didn't do it but if i was just using a standard of how people kind of categorize it i can see that that's kind of it's why they typically and even my when my son was at a certain point i looked for a male mentor in his life you are a mentor to young men so there are certain aspects of life that i think mentorship does work so can you tell, it was help help me understand how the fact that you mentor young men is that it could a woman sit in that room and do the same thing that you're doing i was i was i was literally before you finish i was literally about to say there's absolutely nothing in that room that i teach with the young men that i have not taught to my daughter already or i'm not teaching this my is, daughter. but that's but that's not my, a, my, a norm and that but that is what we're talking that's about what I'm saying. and I, explain that a little bit um, no, uh, because I'm teaching them how to be productive citizens, like we discussed earlier. Um, mm -hmm. There's absolutely, my mother is the one that raised me. So anything that you feel masculine or manly about me is because my mom <laughs> is the one that uh, put it into me. And the crazy thing about this is when you hear someone say, there's no good men out here. That's not what's being said by men. It's being said by women. If you hear that there's no good women out there, that's not being said by women. It's being said by men, which means in our minds, we know what that looks like. So if we know what that looks like, we're probably the better to teach that person how to be that because we know what that looks like. So why not raise your son as a woman to be the like? the identical replica of what it is that you think a man that would be a good man looks like. <laughs> Providing him with all the characteristics, the abilities, and things of like that in order for him to be that good man. You know what it looks like, raise him to be that. Same with, uh, with men. If you're raising daughters, you know what that looks like, 
you raise her to be that. That's really that simple. Uh, you, you literally, you cannot say there's no good man out here if you don't know what that looks like. So take your time and you build them to be that type of person. Because that it's is really, the privilege of parenthood is that you have an that's, that's unadulterated right. audience with your child to train them. That is the privilege. So, so it might be, it might be easier to, uh, to, to get your son to, uh, to, uh, to duplicate his dad peeing in the potty. (laughs) Um, cause he watched his dad pee in the potty, uh, because he saw it, but you can still say, hold it, aim it and and whatever. Like my mom did. (laughs) That's just, that's what you like. And you teach your daughter to sit down when she goes to be outside of those two things. I don't teach my children anything differently. My, my approach to the conversation about sex, my uh, conversation about life, I do not alter that conversation to be one way with my daughter and one way with my sons. It, it's not. If, the, if the, my, the way that I run my household and the way that I run my life is if you're old enough to ask about it, we're old enough to talk about it. Because if you're asking about it, you're interested. And if I don't tell you, you're going to get it from somebody. And I'd rather it come from me because I'm going to give you the truth and the reality, whereas your friends or someone else's parents or whatever might give you the, the wrong information. I want to be the one to equip my children with everything. This is actually why the, the core reason why these are archived and, rec- and recorded so that even in my death, I'm still the, ones, the one that is raising my children so that they can see what daddy thought about this particular topic, what daddy thought about life when it comes to sex or relationships and things of that nature. This is why the, the actual simulation, it means so much to me because that's uh, my, my daughter was the first person to actually experience it and be the, the guinea pig because these are the things that I want my children to have um, so that they can grow from. So I don't, when I mentor young men, it's nothing different than what I, I would do or say if I was in the room with the other young ladies. It's just set up that way, which is so funny because I, I go to these men's <laughs> and women conferences and I've literally heard this, whereby when you left the actual men's event and you asked them what they talked about, then you ask the women's uh, people uh, event what they talked about, they're literally talking about two totally different things and telling each other the two to do different stuff and which is going to, once it comes together, it causes <laughs> conflict. Whereas if we can see that we're very similar and we have the capacity to both be the same person or evolve to the same type of person, then we both can feed off of each other and we have opportunity uh, to grow collectively because we, we too are, are going towards um, our, our, growing towards our capacity as opposed to growing to a certain point that society or the culture says that we are supposed to be. I get you. I think we did. It's, I think it's, it's, it's about being reflective and being intentional. Um, it's easy to, the whole to, point to, of this. Right? Yeah, because it's easy to carry forward what you've always do, continue to do what you've always done and think yeah. that it's going to turn out different with that insanity. But what we're thinking about and what we're trying to do is just challenge the status quo, um, do a little bit of reflective thinking and maybe adjusting our intentions to get the, the, the outcome we want. If you want, like you said, if you know what a good man looks like, then train your son to be a good man <laughs> or be That's the good the man. Or if you know what a good woman looks like, be the good woman. Just be that. It, it, there you go. That's right. That's right. Um, so, I, I mean, that, that's just my philosophy on it. Um, but I, I can assure you, it's, it's so liberating to not put yourself in a box. And, and anything that I teach here, I promise you, is not restricted to this. Um, this, is what, this is why uh, Michelle and I work so well together, um, because this, this, this bleeds over into your work environment. Um, if you're looking at people as individuals, you, uh, you respond to them and you get a lot more of them out of them through your interaction as opposed to the assumed thought process because you're saying he's a man or she's a woman and also don't get so caught up in your experiences that you assume that all people are a certain way. I noticed there have been comments that were even said this evening that implies that they assume that this is what the experience is going to be. No, it is kind of a numbers game. Just like you said, the player, the player is just going to keep going until he finds the right person. You need to 
indirectly had that player's mentality that I have to go through this until I find the person that matches what it is that I'm looking for. It might be painful, but I can assure you that through the process, you're growing and you're also finding out what you do like and what you don't like and pos possibly even dodging the bullet of uh, something that you thought you might like uh, and getting it and then finding that you, you, uh, you don't once you get it. Because um, nothing worse than thinking that you want something, uh, getting it, and then being stuck with it after you got it because, uh, or as T.D. Jakes would put it, uh, you got what you want, but you didn't want what you got. Um, <laughs> any closing remarks, Michelle? Um, as a single person, uh, a person who's been single for a long time, I think that becoming my own best friend has allowed me to be a really good friend to the person in my life right now, which has allowed it to be a much more um, committed, like you said, and not non-physical based connection because I'm, I'm one of friends and so I'm being a friend. Uh, and that allowed for a more organic, honest kind of, of evolution of a relationship. And so, but I can't say that being a parent takes a lot of time and then working on yourself takes some time. So it's, it's very difficult to, to focus and get through that while they're young so i can my hats off to all women who are raising children who are young and doing the thing um but there's a, there's but being intentional and protective of your heart right like you, like the simulator allows you to go through some of these experiences without breaking your heart 17 18 20 32 times <laughs> that is um, good. but, you, but you, you can crack your head you know your your thought process and crack it open and change it and fix it and work through it so breaking your heart um too many times it brings a lot of scar tissue uh, and yeah. I'm grateful for focusing on my kids so much um, that I didn't have a long string of broken heart relationships I don't I don't come to the table with that but I, I did that unintentionally because I, I the couple of times I did get my heart broken were so painful I was like do I want to keep doing this and get like a callus on here or do I want to just pause a mm. minute and come to it with when I'm ready to finally work on it I'll work on it so um, yeah. I, I think that this, the simulator is a, a great tool for playing out the scenarios of relationship, especially for a single person uh, versus going out and constantly dating and just hitting a brick wall and, and starting to kind of doubt yourself. Uh, so I encourage everybody that's a single person that's watching to go ahead and download the, the simulator and try it out. Try it out. I, I appreciate that. That's so true. Um, because there's no getting around the process or the experience that gives you the wisdom. There's no, there's no way to get, get rid of the necessary process, but you can simulate the process through the simulation so that you can ha be hit with those things that you would have never thought could happen or with the psychological thought pro process behind that happening, like the whole presenting yourself as a representative just implying that you actually need to address a, a self-esteem issue. Uh, those types of things um, uh, are, 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 you have to have that experience, but to have the counseling embedded in the experience so that you can now know how to um, uh, look at it objectively and actually notice like, wow, I didn't even realize that I was doing this or, or uh, how this is impacting this particular thing. It, it allows, it empowers you so that we can, as we state, um, experience love on purpose and not by chance. Um, thank you, beautiful Susie. I appreciate you. Uh, she said, great conversation. Um, Henry said, hashtag nine to the both of you for the great outstanding job. You are all doing uh, the transparency is priceless. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your consistent um, contributions to the actual conversation and just your consistency on listening and, um, and viewing. Um, uh, as, as far as how I'm going to conclude, uh, there's a, a man by the name of Hiro Onoda. Hiro ono Onoda. You he had was to practice actual, that. Um, ah, not, not so much. Uh, <laughs> uh, Hiro Onoda, uh, he was actually a, a soldier in, in World War II. <clears throat> and and while, while being a soldier, he ended up in the jungles in the Philippines and his commander told him to, uh, to camp out in the jungle and to protect and, and not to move from that particular jungle until he is advised otherwise. 
And um, if you want to look this up, it's H I R, um, I think O O N O D A is his name. But he he stayed there, not knowing that on August of 1945 that the World War was over, and and didn't surrender because he did not know. He stayed there and was protecting that jungle and actually killing people and everything for 30 years. It wasn't until 1974, a hiker found this man camping out there and told him that the war was, the war was over and he did not believe him. So he, the hiker had to in turn go all the way back to Japan to find his commanding officer who had already retired, thank goodness he was alive, to get him to come back from Japan to the Philippines to release him from a fictitious war that he had been fighting in that jungle for 30 years. I share that story because in our minds, we are fighting to hold on to something that was established a war between men and women being a certain way, how we're supposed to act and how we're supposed to think and how we're supposed to maneuver. And we are living in something that we've been liberated from for many, many years. Women have rights. They don't have to be stay at home moms. They don't have to, they're not restricted to certain jobs. As a matter of fact, typically in a household, we have to have both working to uh, provide. Men have evolved to be able to uh, to be nurturers and teachers and, and motivators and emotional uh, support systems for so many people. And for us to still be in the mindset that we are still in this World War II, uh, when the war has been over, you have been free from that particular war, uh, is going to prevent us from evolving to who it is that we are supposed to be, who we can be when it comes to this thing called relationships, and I'm going to continue to make you feel uncomfortable about this. Because if you were listening to me last week, I said people typically default. Like they've been listening and they say, oh, yeah, I get it. And then in our conversation, they'll say something like, you know how men are. You know how women are. That means in your heart of hearts, that still is your default setting. And I know for sure that you're still uh, missing out on so many great opportunities to grow or evolve in your relationship or your communication, if that's still your default setting. So I'm gonna keep beating this upside your head and making you feel uncomfortable and calling y'all out on it when your thought process leans towards it because I promise you it's doing you a disservice. So I want us to stop thinking that we are in a war and surrender. <laughs> surrender, him. I am your commander. I'm coming back to you all to let you know that you do not have to be in this jungle anymore. You can come back home and you can stop fighting and killing unnecessary relationships because you won't take the time to, uh, to, to actually see that person as an individual or take them out of this box or even yourself out of a box that someone or society or culture has put you in. Because it's not necessary. We're not living in those times anymore. Amen. Be you. All right. All so. With that being said, I absolutely love you all. I, 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 I really do. I, I cannot stress that enough. I, I truly appreciate your, your thought processes, your questions. Uh, I'm so fine with you challenging any of my, uh, my questions. As I said, I openly said, any man, any woman, tell me, what is it that it takes to, to, to raise a woman? Or what is it to take right, to raise a man? I gave you. I, I gave you all, like... I don't care what you bring to me. I will debunk it. Outside of we provide the seed, y'all y'all carry the baby. Now nah, you say we get it, but but we keep having to have this conversation, so we don't get it. But until we meet again, I love you all dearly. Um, y'all be safe. I will continue to um, read, search, pray so that I can make sure that I'm equipping you all with things that will allow for you all to navigate through life in a manner that's more easier than it's been. Um, you all are fighting some serious stuff out there. I wouldn't want to be single. I know I can navigate well as a single person, um, but uh, what you all are dealing with out here, especially with, with the media's feeding, 
uh, from a mindset standpoint as to what love and relationships are. Uh, it's, it's tough, uh, which is why we got to get you all to a place where you understand it and where you all love yourselves to where you're presenting yourself as yourself so that you have a better chance of finding true love. Um, this, this is just a, a platform. I look forward to this every Thursday. Um, if you're looking online, please hit the subscribe button. If you find that the material is helpful, share it. Uh, click the share button. This is not just hidden or uh, here to be here. Um, if you find that is value, it may very well be valuable to someone else. Please share it with someone else. Um, until we meet again, I love you all. Be safe. Take care and have a good one.